Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. Uh, this is Bethany Fagan speaking. I'm our marketing manager here at PandaDoc. Uh, looking forward to presenting some great content for you guys today. Um, I'm going to let everybody give a few minutes to, uh, or just a couple minutes to trickle in here and get settled. Um, while I do that, it'd uh, be great to hear from the audience today where you guys are located, where you're tuning in from. We always like to uh, see where our audience is, is located and, and giving us a shout out. Um, a couple of housekeeping things. Um, we are recording today's session, so um, no need to worry about uh, saving that or getting that recorded. We'll take care of that for you. Um, you should receive that recording in your inbox um, after the presentation is over. Um, I've also included the slides uh, to the webinar as well located in the attachments and links section um, in BrightTalk. So feel free to reference those later if you need to. Um, you'll also find a few other uh, links and goodies in the attachment section that we'll cover a little bit later. Um, but I'm going to go on pause here for a couple of minutes and just let everybody settle in and we'll get started in about one minute or so. Thanks everybody. Let's get started. Uh, so today I'm going to allow our two speakers to uh, introduce themselves. But uh, first up, we have Mike Palladino. He is our head of sales here at PandaDoc. Um, Mike, take it away. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Thank you, Bethany. Uh, welcome, everybody. It's, uh, it's my pleasure to join today and talk a little shop. Um, my name is Mike. Like Bethany mentioned, I'm the head of sales over here at PandaDoc. Um, I've been at PandaDoc coming up on three years now, about five years in tech, and before that I was doing some operations work, um, which I think uh, is really relevant to today's discussion as we talk about efficiencies and sales enablement. Um, I've always been really passionate about uh, being sort of at the crux of cost and production, um, and today we're going to discuss a lot of uh, tactics to minimize that cost while driving that production. So. I'm um, really excited to to chat today, and um, I would like to also introduce Adrian Chow uh, from, from AutoClose. Adrian, would you like to introduce yourself really quickly? Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, as a salesperson myself over the last 22 years, um, I'd also like to thank all of you for joining us today, because I know how hard it is for each of you to spend an hour away from either the phones or pounding the pavement. Um, for, the for, for the last half of my life, I was... Uh, uh, on Bay Street and Wall Street, uh, working at a hedge fund, um, you know, raising capital for a lot of large money managers. And over the last two years, I've been, um, you know, we, we, we co-founded and launched AutoClose. And so I've burned all my suits and uh, grown in uh, an unshaven goatee. But I'm, work I'm not, it's not as full as Mike, but I'm working on it, I'm working on it. <laughs> um, it is exciting for me to be presenting with Mike today because I can honestly say that you know, AutoClose would not have grown into the company that we have in the last year had it not been integrating um, PandaDoc into our own sales process. Um, so I think we're all here today on this call because we have at least one thing in common, and that is that we're all ambitious, driven salespeople. I can safely say without a doubt that I'm sure each of you are even amazing at what you do. Why? Because you're here with some humility and the passion to possibly learn more or be better, and maybe even find some new tools to use in your toolbox. So for that reason, Mike and I feel that all of you here today will benefit from some of the insights and best practices that we've gained you know, helping sales teams across the globe find efficiency by employing some of the right tools and to technology together. So we'll just jump into a, a, the first slide, I think, um, that many of you will know um, just offhand. You know, uh, and I'll start off by telling a story at the risk of dating myself. Um, I remember once upon a time growing up way before Google um, that you had to look up everything in the Encyclopedia Britannica. 
You know, literally people sold these suitcases full of books door to door. And I never once turned to my parents and said, hey, when I grow up, I want to be just like that guy. Um, so the point is, like, most of us don't find a career in sales. It usually finds us. Because somewhere along the way, we discover that, you know, we're, we really excel at one thing, and that's talking to people. You know, I've never heard a salesperson um, that I've worked with or on my team that's told me their favorite part of the job is writing reports or doing their expenses. Um, as most of you know, evidence shows us here in this slide that two-thirds of a salesperson's time is spent um, wasted, you know, during the day not talking to clients or prospects. Um, and therefore not driving sales process forward. So looking at this slide, you know, why as salespeople do we waste so much of our day on tasks that are usually um, you know, not generating uh, profit or revenue to the bottom line, or that we're not great at, or that we hate even? Um, so obviously it's important to stay organized and on top of all your interactions as a salesperson in order to um, you know, keep deals coming in the pipeline and continuously close as many of them as possible. But it really becomes easy for each of us to get bogged down, I think, in the minutia of things like admin. Um, so if I was to break out each and every single minute that each of you, each and every one of us spends on tasks you know, throughout the week, what percentage of your time, which is obviously your most precious resource, is actually spent adding value to your business or to your company? You know, was it the time that you spent sending all those follow-up emails that you were supposed to send last week? Was it when you frantically pounded out 50 phone calls yesterday um, only to get three of the 25 meetings you should have in your calendar next week? Or was it when, you know, you, or how about those eight outstanding deals that you quoted last month that you were sure would be home runs and now you can't even get the decision maker to return your phone call? So the million dollar question is there has to be a better way. And thankfully, um, today you've got, a, you've got access to a plethora of, of technology and tools to leverage from companies like mine and Mike's so that you can automate all of those tedious, mundane tasks that take your focus away from what you do best, which is selling. Any comments there, Mike? Yeah, Adrian, I, I really like sort of how you mentioned what are we doing to try to help the business, you know, drive, drive the business forward. I think that's really important to mention. Um, I, I don't know about you, Adrian, but I'm talking to sales and marketing leadership all day long. And, you know, process improvement is certainly nice to have. We always want to be doing things better and, and improve our processes, but that's more of a, a sales operation and sort of a value add. And really where, where sales leadership seems to be focusing is really how can we focus our, our efforts on activities that have the best yield. Um, so it's really sort of this, this mix of process improvement, but also how can we drive revenue and increase sort of an ROI on those activities. Um, so the market definitely would agree with, with, this, uh, with this slide here. Um, everybody's spending too much time doing everything but selling. Um, and when you do have that time back, how can you maximize it on high ROI activity? Absolutely, absolutely. And that kind of speaks to, um, you know, the, the next slide here. I mean, there, just to acknowledge that, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a wide range of um, attendees here that are listening on this call, but I know some of you might be fortunate enough to say, well, Adrian, you know, I'm blessed. I have, a four, I have an awesome sales assistant. I've got a team of 10 inside sales reps or account executives to do all of that heavy lifting for me. Um, and that would be great. But to that, I'd say, well, how much more sales alpha could each of those team members on your sales team add if they weren't spending time doing things like follow-up or booking your calendar for the next month or two months? Um, if your team instead spent that time nurturing the biggest accounts that you have, upselling them, strengthening existing relationships that you have, um, and you were able to focus more on closing the next new deal, um, how much would that add to the bottom line? So even if your business or your enterprise is further along in its life cycle uh, and more established, then you may have a huge advantage of having leads and prospects come to you on an inbound basis. But I think it's important that um, you, know, you, you have that balance between inbound and outbound. And I think 
um, at least at the very least from auto closes perspective, the outbound uh, portion of the of your sales strategy is is that much more important. Um, you need to have a strategic focus on that, and you have to consistently be filling the top end of your pipeline with new leads and new prospects. So um, I think there's there's a huge shift happening uh, in the sales space towards automation, um, as you can see from the left end here to the right, you know, the right side of the slide. You know. Um, gone are the days, I hope, of selling encyclopedias door to door. There's there's a much better way. So based on a you know recent Pega System survey, um, it's been studied that 40% of companies currently in the Fortune 500 are using sales automation already, and 71% of the companies that are not uh, are planning to do so in the next two years. Yeah, just to sort of piggyback on top of this, you know, Adrian's chatting about sort of filling the top of the funnel with more leads and how we can sort of maximize on automation to do so. Um, there's also the opportunity cost of what all of that 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 automation will actually warrant you. So, for example, in Panadoc recently, we we just invested in an SDR team to handle sort of our prospecting and our um, our pipeline production number. Um, and, and that gave our sales reps who were previously doing a hybrid um, prospecting and closing model, taking everything from lead to close one, uh, it enabled them to get a bunch of time back on, the, on, the weekly, on a weekly basis. Um, and now, as opposed to focusing on, is this a qualified lead, they're actually more focused on pulling down surplus pipeline and therefore increasing productivity uh, of the entire org. Now we have a team focused on prospecting, more time loosened up for the, the closing team, and now they're spending more of their activities um, shaking the trees, so to speak, to bring down more pipeline and therefore increase their, their chances um, of hitting their number and driving the business forward. Yeah, absolutely, Mike. I mean, activity obviously breeds results. So, you know, it really is important that um, if we as salespeople – are, are the best at getting in front of clients, and if that is where we're operating at peak efficiency, then as much time as you can free up through automation, um, you know, the better your results are going to be. Um, just generally speaking, uh, you know, executing a successful sales plan today means you, you have to find an optimal balance between a lot of different moving parts, right? Like these are just nine of, of uh, the tasks that salespeople um, have to accomplish just to fill the top end of their funnel. And, and I know, Mike, you're gonna, we're going to spend some time talking about the bottom end of the funnel, but, um, you know, just to get in front of new deals, you have to be uncovering new leads. You have to have leads in the first place. Then you have to engage, qualify, segment them. And then, of course, you've got to <laughs> – our managers or our sales leaders want to document, report, and analyze all of those results, Right. Um, all of this stuff is noise and distraction from what we really should be doing um, as much as we can of, and that's, uh, you know, being in front of clients. I remember um, when I was working at Fidelity Investments for 15 years, we used Salesforce, which was kind of the bane of my existence. Uh, I remember, you know, at one point being really behind in call reports and saying, you know, do you want me to be a professional CRM updater, or did you hire me to sell? You know, so so there 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 is that there is that balance between um, you know uh, doing what all the things that we hate to do but have to be done as a part of the sales role, but you know freeing up as much time as, as we can to get in front of uh, our clients. And luckily today, you know, there there are SaaS technology and sales automation companies like AutoClose and PandaDoc that you have access to now. Um, so we can actually automate almost all of the work that you see on this slide, and therefore um, giving you more time to close deals. So uh, I think the other important thing to mention is, you know, as salespeople, you have to have the flexibility and capacity to be reactive throughout the day to, you, you know, inbound deals or, or clients that are calling in. Um, so the more sales automation you can deploy, uh, the more resources you're going to have to focus on that. Um, I do want to say that, you know, if, if I can ask you to think about what just one thing uh, for a minute, 
you know, how are you currently generating and mining new leads? How are you bringing new deals into the pipeline um, and, and, you know, and, and turning over more stones? Hypothetically, let's say tomorrow I handed you a bunch of leads, more leads than you knew what to do with. Let's say that number is 2,000, or maybe the magic number is 50,000. If I give you 50,000 leads tomorrow, and if you maximized all of your resources at your disposal today, how long would it take you to close, you know, to take each and every one of those leads through the process that we see on this slide? And how much faster could you get there um, if you employed sales automation and did most of that uh, automatically? Any comments, Mike, before I, I go to the next slide? No, this one, you know, it's, it's again, it's sort of the what if question. What are you going to be yeah. doing if, if all of this is, is taken care of, right? Like you mentioned, having to update the CRM, like that's table stakes now for like new sales force, uh, excuse me, new sales hires. Like everybody's expected to be able to do the CRM. So as automation continues to increase, um, our sales reps are going. What, what their focus and what their activities are is going to further evolve into, again, those activities that that require human touch. Um, and and I highly doubt that you know, regardless of what Salesforce says with Einstein, et cetera, that the, that the sales role will ever be fully automated. And that's because um, there is always going to be that human activity that is required to to push another human being to sign something. Um, or to commit to something. So what if all of this is automated? Like, we don't necessarily know where where the sales role might evolve as we get better and better and leverage technology. Um, but it's our jobs to sort of stay ahead of the game um, and leverage these tools in order to uh, to do a better job collectively. Really good point. It's true. I mean, it's always going to be an art form. Um, but, you know, there's, there's, there's um, some efficiency to be had. And if we just look at this, the next slide, um, this was a study that was done by Salesforce. And I would say, you know, one thing that I harp on my sales guys uh, the most day in and day out is to do the follow-up. You know, most people, I think, most salespeople admit their, their biggest challenge or their shortcoming is all the deals that you leave on the table because you didn't consistently follow up. Um, and keep those sales opportunities or conversations alive. You know, most people try once or twice and then on average give up. Um, but, you know, what we're seeing here, obviously, is it takes at least 8 to 13 touches or touch points to convert a brand new lead into someone that's ready to buy. So if we just did the math, if I gave you those 50,000 leads tomorrow, um, oh, by the way, that's going to take about a half a million touch points for you to convert each and every one of those into potentially a new sale. You know, so, so how much of your resources, um, how much time in the current structure that you have would that take you? Yeah, and I can even piggyback on that too. With like, We're an inbound, an inbound-based business, so a lot of our leads are, are hand raisers, um, and we still need to see about eight to ten touches even on an inbound model. Um, so I'd have to argue that, that it might even take even more touches than that if you're doing outbound. And if you have a huge list of leads, uh, like, to your point, the, the volume of activities required to actually prospect those and convert them um, is absurd. And we, we absolutely need to rely on automation in order to do that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 8 to 13 just to get to the, you know, to the point where you do the pitch. You know, never mind closing the sale afterwards and all the touch points necessary there. Um, so I think this is a slide that's good for both of us. Um, you know, I think, you know, with tools like AutoClose and PandaDoc, salespeople can really, with a minimal amount of effort, um, offload some of those really resource-heavy activities. Um, so, you know, if we were able to just do your lead gen, um, and then if you spend a, a small amount of time creating, you know, impactful personalized campaigns, and templates that you could use over and over um, to engage your prospects, you know, automatically fill your calendar with appointments like we do, and send and track all of your proposals and quotes um, efficiently and with, a lot, with, with the right amount of information, um, you'll get to the sale much faster. And so literally, you know, if, if automation, this may be a, kind of a pipe dream, but 
if automation is working um, uh, in its most ideal state, then literally all you have to do is show up to your meetings, do your pitch, um, which I know each of you could probably do in your sleep, close, you know, and, 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 and move on to the next deal. So I think what Mike and I will probably agree the most uh, important thing about automation is that um, even if you don't change anything about what you do today from a day-to-day -day basis, you know, you might be a really good cold caller. Um, you might land six huge clients at a speaking engagement that you have at the Hilton next week. Um, you can and should keep doing all of that, but at least leveraging some of the tools that you have available to you like ours. Um, you know, you can keep doing everything that you've always done well, but have us fill the top end of your pipeline and um, help you close at the bottom end of your pipeline uh, around the clock all day, every day. Yep, and um, you know, from a from a top of the funnel standpoint, it's all about about the automation that gets you to that meeting. Um, and the Panadoc side of this is sort of the automation that takes place after that meeting, um, enhancing the buyer's journey once you actually have your teeth or your claws in them, um, and and doing your best to to use actionable insights at the bottom of the funnel to to enhance even your activities. Uh, post demo or or post opportunity being created, um, so we're going to get into that a little bit more specifically when we look at some of the PandaDoc slides as well. Yeah, absolutely. So um, you know, talking about this shift towards using these types of tools, I mentioned earlier. You know, seventy one percent of companies in the Fortune five hundred um, are are planning to use uh, sales automation in the next two years to increase you know efficiency and engagement, um, but you know, I'll just start off by showing you one of our actual clients. I, I, I realize it's a little um, grainy. It might be hard to read. The slides will actually be um, will actually be available to you uh, for download, and you'll be able to see them much clearer. But this is actually one of our clients right within our um, uh, our software here, and this is just a campaign. So, you know, let's imagine the holiday season just around the corner. Um, you know, this is actually a snapshot of um, our largest client. I've made them anonymous, of course, but let's pretend for a second that these are actually your results over the next two months. Um, on the right, you can see, you know, this is a campaign that's been designed, um, which sends automatic, uh, automated amount of emails that you've sort of pre-written with a bunch of follow-ups as well. Um, the goal, obviously, is to solicit a response, you know, and that could be through opens, clicks, and hopefully a reply or even someone booking a meeting directly in your calendar. So imagine you round up the kids and take the family down to Cabo, uh, you know, for the next, you know, for 14 days in December. But the night before you get on the plane, you spend a couple of hours designing your email campaign. And just before you leave, you send it. Um, you know, that's exactly what this person has done. Essentially, you know, sending 8,000 emails over, uh, a 30 day period. And so, you know, if that, if you or this person was sipping pina coladas on the beach, you've just done cold outreach to 8,000 people, um, you know, and through a set of planned follow ups, he's engaged interest in his product, uh, maybe by including like a video message or explainer video along with that campaign as well. You can see that, you know, um, mo almost, a, you know, almost a third of those people. Uh, have opened his email. He's got, you know, almost 600 clicks. So let's say a click is, you know, a, a, a pricing chart or, um, you know, a link to your, um, your web page. Um, and you can see from the number of replies, obviously there's a lot of positive uh, results in, 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 in what he's achieved in, in, doing, in, in doing this campaign. So literally if we, if, we, if we extrapolate, you know, the number of clicks and the replies and conservatively say that this person, you know, over the period he was on vacation with his kids, books 200 meetings um, in his calendar from people that are somewhat interested in, in his product or service, then literally by the time you get back from vacation, you will have, you know, your calendar full and be busy for the next two months. Um, so that's what we're, that's what the goal is, you know, um, and, and, PandaDoc and, and, and AutoClose tools like the ones that we're offering can work seamlessly in the background to help you 
uncover these sales opportunities, whether you're on the beach or you're driving to your next sales appointment. Um, it's just a, a much more efficient use of time. Yeah, I guess uh, one of those value adds that we failed to mention here with, with automation is that it enables us to maybe go on vacation a little bit more often. Um, but uh, yeah. yeah, just to use yeah. like the exact, just to use the same anecdote as, as Adrian, um, you know, not necessarily from a, a prospecting standpoint, but let's just say it's the exact same situation, you know, uh, I'm, I'm getting wrapped up for, uh, for, for a vacation starting next week. Um, I've buttoned up all of my opportunities. I've communicated to all my prospects. Um, but my sales manager is still expecting me to hit my number, even though I'm, I'm one, one week out of the, out of the month, I won't be working. Um, with PandaDoc, you can, you can still close some deals while sipping those pina coladas on the beach, you know, um, with, with all of this, with all of this automation, like, you know, we, we really can do our job from anywhere. And if the market's telling us anything or if technology's telling us anything, it's that, that the sales rep is becoming much more of a remote role or maybe a work from home role, um, or maybe work from the road. Maybe, maybe field reps need to have that same type of, that same, same type of insight. Um, with, with PandaDoc, you can close out your, your deals, um, from the road, from the beach, wherever it may be. Um, and you can also sort of track actionable insight from the beach as well. If, if folks are, are viewing your proposals or forwarding your proposals, um, you actually have this insight that enables you to make some better decisions at the bottom of the funnel, um, and potentially close more deals and from anywhere, whether it's vacation and Uber on a plane do it on your phone um, you can close it anywhere and and we need these tools um, in order to to maintain that that competitive advantage um, as our roles begin to change um, with technology yeah actually one of the one of the coolest things I can say um, I know there's, there's a bunch of PandaDoc existing customers on the call today um, along with you know some people that uh, are already auto close users but one of the coolest things I think uh, speaking of technology, about PandaDoc is, you know, just this past summer when I was, um, I was in Singapore, one of the most exciting things that you can see real time with a PandaDoc, a PandaDoc quote or, or, or you know, um, um, a deal that you have on the table is that real time you can see when someone goes into the document and is looking at it. You know, how many, how many minutes ago did they, did they open the document? And literally when they sign the document, um, you get an immediate, immediate uh, notification. So it's kind of like even though I was you know, in an airport uh, waiting for my next flight um, and flying to Hong Kong, I literally saw three deals come in and uh, you know, I didn't have to call into the office or I didn't have to wait for the, you know, for the buyer to send me an email. Um, I literally saw it real time right on the, right on the PandaDoc app. Yeah, and that instant gratification is obviously awesome for a sales rep who's uh, probably got a large <laughs> ego and is highly competitive. Um, but internally, we've actually hacked it to push a webhook into Slack. So now the entire company has a notification when a new deal is closed, um, and everybody really, really rallies behind those wins as they come in. It's definitely our, our number one channel in uh, Slack is our sales wins channel. Um, and when that, that notification comes in, um, the virality of, of everybody rallying behind that win and sort of, you know, pushing the bus forward um, and, 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 and really aligning all of our global offices um, behind a sales win is, is an awesome thing to behold on a, uh, a daily basis. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, as we speak about automation, I think um, a lot of you might be thinking, okay, well, uh, Adrian's talking about email. Um, you know, and in today's day and age, as a salesperson, to, to, to utilize all the tools at your disposal, um, you know, the latest, greatest thing is video messaging. Um, you know, attaching personalized videos right within your email um, in order to, to bump up your stats and, and get more opens, right? But you should also be using things like Navigator and LinkedIn. Um, you should have multi-channel touch points. Um, and so email isn't the, the you know, the, the be-all and the end-all. AutoClose has actually got um, in the pipe, you know, a multi-channel access uh, campaign where, you know, maybe you send two emails in order to, you know, 
potentially get the person interested, then maybe the third step is adding a LinkedIn connection. Maybe the fourth step is um, sending an automated voicemail drop, you know, a pre-recorded voicemail that, um, that you've sent to a recipient who's already received you know, three touch points from you, um, so on and so on. But I do want to focus just for a quick second on email because it is, um, it is what, you know, from a bread and butter standpoint, uh, what we rely on and what we get the most success from, even in today's day and age of, of spam. Um, so really, you know, it, it, there's, there's nothing magic about it. Um, cutting through the spam is, is, is a little bit of science and art as well. So if we just look at, you know, some of the important numbers here, you know, a third of people that uh, will receive an email, if you, if you put yourself, you know, in the, in the shoes of the, or in the mindset of someone that's receiving a cold email, 33% of those recipients will open it based on subject line alone. And of course, you have to understand that today with, you know, smartphones, 40% of emails are actually opened on a mobile. So you're, your subject line has to be really short and to the point. You know, you only want to use four to seven words max. And of course, personalization is everything. Um, you know, uh, I don't want to, I'm not going to open an email that says free offer, act now. Um, you know, but if it's got my name and even more so um, if it addresses my, you know, what I do at the company and the company I work at, then it will seem like I've got a, you know, that this person has a valid business reason for reaching out to me. Um, Trick of the trade, uh, our, if you look at actually the, the top 10, this is a HubSpot study, the top 10 most responded emails have RE in the beginning of their subject line. So there's kind of a life hack, but um, you can actually fool people if, you, if, you're, if your subject line is RE or regarding, um, let's say, PandaDoc proposal for Microsoft. You know, the person that's receiving the email thinks they're actually, um, they've missed you know, responding to a previous email, and they'll definitely open it that much quicker. So I don't want to spend too much time on it, but this is actually a couple of snapshots. Again, I, I forgive them, for, forgive me for them being so grainy, but um, personalization is everything. So, you know, having a tool, um, and there are a lot of tools out there, but having a tool that can map, you know, for more than just first name, last name, you know, if you can map job title or if you can map whether or not the person uses uh, Microsoft Dynamics or um, whether or not they use Oracle software, all of that will help you get uh, much, much better results. And this is what we kind of coach all of our users on a daily basis um, to focus on when they're doing their cold outreach. A few... Um, you know, subject lines I think that are important um, if you incorporate this as a part of your process or just as a part of your daily, your day-to-day, -day, you know, follow-up emails. Um, the, 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 the RE, um, using, using the RE in front of anything pretty much uh, will help you with your, with your open rate. Um, but don't ever be uh, scared to ask for the referral right away. You know, especially if you're reaching out to a new company that you haven't dealt with before. Um, yeah, I've had a lot, you know, some of, some of the biggest deals that our users have landed um, have come from people saying, hey, look, I've been trying to reach out to someone at the company that deals with X, right? Maybe it's compliance. Um, the person that responds and says, you know, I actually, that's not my department, but you should actually get in touch with this person. They're the right person to talk to. Boom. You've got a warm handoff, and you can actually email the right person and say, um, "So and so got you know suggested that I get in touch with you to talk to you about this." Um, you're already in there, uh, and you've got a warm handoff. So, um, it, 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 like I said, it's a little bit of science and art as well. So, um, I would I would dare you to be you know to even use a little bit of humor. Uh, one of the biggest digital security. Uh, network security companies that we work with. Um, he he loves, you know, doing his cold outreach campaigns. And he says, you know, he'll say something like, Tom, it's seriously time to fire Stevie Wonder, which I thought was a little offside and maybe a little politically incorrect at the time. But um, what I thought is interesting is that, you know, when you, when you open the email and you read it, it says, it, it speaks to, you know, if you don't have someone running digital security for you, then essentially your security guard is, you know, someone that's 
that's blind, you know. So um, using a little bit of humor can cut through a lot of the spam as well. Um, I'm going to, just in the interest of time, I'm going to skip through a little bit. So one thing that I think is less is more uh, from a cold outreach strategy, and uh, we can spend more time on this. Um, if There will be a free trial for you guys to take a look at afterwards. But um, one thing that really worked well for me in the summer is as a salesperson, you know, one of the biggest challenges we have is keeping our calendars full. And as, as Mike said earlier, you know, activity really is the most important um, a result that we can control and that we can achieve on a day-to-day -day basis. So during the summer, I just basically said, um, you know, Tony, how, how full is your calendar today? Or I was even trying to be funny, you know, initially I used um, hashtag this is just a cold email, but um, in my intro I said, you know, cold emails actually have led one of our users in the last six months to three and a half million dollars in sales. Um, so wouldn't it be nice to have your calendar as full as mine? Uh, as you can see from me, you can't really see it, but there's a picture of my calendar here. Um, I think the record on my sales team is uh, so one person had 14 um, booked meetings with prospects in one day. Uh, so that's, you know, that, that's kind of the dream, right? It, suppose that you're, busy, you're off busy doing a whole bunch of different things. Um, have automation fill that top end of your pipeline for you. So essentially, all you have to do is show up and close the deal. I've spent a lot of time on uh, opens and click-through rates. Um, I think that I will um, hand it over to Mike before I do that. Um, you know, uh, one thing that I want to challenge you to sort of think about is, you know, at the end of the day, you guys all know where you want to go. Um, you're in the driver's seat of your own sales plan. Well, let's say, you know, I put you in a car and I tell you to drive from L.A. to New York. Um, instead of driving in this Ford, though, let's say I put you in a newly minted, fresh off the line Tesla Model 3, you know, with all of the bells and whistles, self-driving technology at your fingertips. Employing sales automation tools like ours is really like having GPS and Waze. You know, it's going to get you um, to Manhattan a lot faster, and it's going to keep you from sitting in traffic. Um, so would you take your hands off the wheel if I told you that you had the, uh, the option to? Um, so I think I've spent a lot of time talking about the, you know, filling the top end of your sales funnel. Um, I do want to hand it over to Mike because you know, um, his company very much specializes on filling the bottom end of the sales – or closing the bottom end of the sales funnel. Mike? Yeah, thank you, Adrian. Um, so I kind of want to piggyback off of one of the pieces here from Adrian's slides, you know, the, the subject lines. Um, that, that's, that's a classic trick, the re, the re regarding. Um, I've been using that for years, and it's only kind of becoming um, uh, an adopted strategy, I think, status quo recently. But we sort of imply uh, a similar process to, to Panadoc. Subject lines are really important to us. For us, it's more the, uh, the title of the proposal um, but subject lines, personalization, customization, open rates, like these are all, all tactics or notifications that can help us do better. Um, and they're all tricks of the trade that like in some, at some point in the selling evolution, uh, they were manual, but now they're becoming much more automated. Um, and that's because like buyers are predictable. Um, they they want to feel comfortable with a vendor. Um, so the proposal, like, really needs to be professional and it really needs to stand out versus the competition. Um, maybe, maybe you're selling against a bunch of enterprise solutions that, uh, that, that are far further in their life cycle than you are, and you really need to stand out with a, a uber professional and, and, um, and custom-looking document. That's something that you can find at Panadoc. So from a design standpoint, we really want to enable our customers um, to to drive that comfort with their buyers, um, but buyers also want to know that you've solved similar problems for for similar customers. Um, so customization is also an extremely important aspect of this. How can you leverage technology to customize a proposal with 
um, a case study that is a competitor of the clients or in the same vertical or where we're solving a very similar, a very similar problem for the client. How can we tell this story um, in a relevant way and customize this proposal um, as a mechanism to do so? Uh, buyers also want to understand, you know, how how your implementation process works or maybe how your pricing works. So the proposal can also become a place where you educate your buyers about how to adopt your, your, your software or what that process looks like or what the cost may be. Um, and, and all of this is really sort of the, the portion that Panadoc will automate for you. Um, through the use of, of templates, through the use of, uh, of content libraries, um, and aligning marketing and sales with content that you can fill these, these libraries with, Panadoc becomes a place where marketing and sales can really align to enhance your buyer's journey um, by customizing, educating, and designing something that's professional and is a great first step forward um, in the bottom of the funnel um, during sort of this, uh, this, this consideration and buying phase. Um, but that's not really the only piece um, that PandaDoc will help you with. Uh, the other portion is sort of these actionable insights. Everybody's looking for actionable insights, and we talk a whole lot about analytics and notifications and open rates. It's like, but what are you doing with that information to help you do a better job? So you can see here, and again, you know, it's a little grainy, but you'll have these on the download. We have notifications on our on our um, on our view rates in PandaDoc here that are granular down to the actual page of the document that the person was viewing, um, and and you can actually see percentages of where people are focusing their time. So if you notice that somebody is is spending uh, far more time on the pricing table than they are on maybe um, some of your marketing content, then you certainly know that that pricing might be what is holding this deal up, and you need to prepare yourself for that conversation. Um, perhaps you see that the proposal that you sent to the uh, head of sales actually got forwarded to um, Adrian Chow, the SVP, um, and now you realize, okay, this is actually a decision maker that I'm 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 really hunting for. This is the person that's making that decision. Um, so again, that's that's actionable insight that will allow a sales rep um, to to do a little bit better. Um, the other piece here too is is for a sales leader like myself, you know, I'm always trying to harness my my sales team's focus specifically at the end of a month and at the end of a quarter when you know we're we're watching the revenue number grow and we're trying to fill that gap um with with these open rates and with these statuses of the proposals whether it's in viewed or 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 sent or if it were forwarded you're going to have an idea of which folks are are actual buyers and which ones maybe aren't ready to buy so i can now focus my sales reps activities to high yield um, activity at the bottom of the funnel. Should I be spending a lot of time reaching out to somebody who hasn't even opened my proposal, or should I maybe spend a little bit of additional time pushing somebody who has viewed it um, and has forwarded it? Do, do, w where would my odds be better to close this deal? Most likely in that viewed document. Um, and finally, as a sales leader, it really enhances my forecasting capabilities, especially as we're finishing up a month or a quarter. Um, if I can see almost a pipeline at the bottom of the funnel, you know, how many dollars does this person have in sent proposals? How many dollars does this person have sent in viewed proposals? Um, that's going to enable my final forecast at the end of the month, at the end of the quarter, uh, when the executive team is asking me where we're going to fall. Um, I use PandaDoc to really uh, increase my closest to the pin number um, on, a, uh, on a monthly and quarterly basis as we're forecasting here. So these are just some tricks of the trade uh, specific to PandaDoc. Um, I think this is a really interesting conversation because Adrian is much more on the top of the funnel and PandaDoc is right at the bottom of the funnel. Um, and it's sort of like the sales cycle that, that sits between us. Um, but, but that's really all I had here. And I think we're, we're probably going to move into some Q&A unless, um, unless, Adrian, you have some, some more to speak to. Yeah, the only thing I was going to mention on your last slide, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not just a, a customer, I'm not just a, you know, the, like the, the hair club for men guy, um, I, I'm also a customer. You know, one of the things that I think is super, super um, simple about what PandaDoc does, but what we all strive to do in the closing of a deal in that whole process is um, having a sense of urgency and a timeline. 
And so one of the things that I love about PandaDoc is, in addition, you know, in addition to um, how nice a quote is, just, can be designed and how it looks, there's an expiry date, you know. So you know, you're, you're asking, when do I follow a post proposal? Well, I love that there's a built-in way as a salesperson that the Panda doc will expire after a certain amount of time, and I can actually set that time. So I've got, um, I can add urgency to the, the bottom end of closing a deal, and um, I can add a timeline, you know, which is which are organic and gives me a valid, uh, important reason for me to follow up. Um, so it's almost a built-in way of, you know. Um, making a, uh, a potential prospect know that you're definitely going to be following up with them within a certain period of time. Yeah, so it's very we, we, actually, we actually call it's that a um, feature. fabricating a compelling reason. You know, so it's like every buyer, <laughs> every buyer that has that compelling reason to buy, you know, our time cycle is this, we need to buy it yesterday. Everybody wants to be in that position, but it doesn't happen in every single deal. Um, so yeah, with PandaDoc, like, like Adrian mentioned, you can, you can actually almost fabricate a compelling, uh, timeline, um, and control that sales cycle a little bit better and set the right expectations. Like Adrian said that you will be here in a follow up for me, or perhaps this pricing that I approved actually does have an expiration date. We're not going to be able to approve it past a certain date too. Um, so anything that you can do to drive decision making, um, and maintain uh, a mutual action plan and timeline is obviously going to help the business. Absolutely. All right, so I think we're we're we have about 14 minutes left here and I think we're going to open it up to a Q&A. Bethany, are you going to drive this portion? Yeah. Um thanks Adrian and Mike for the great prezzo. Um appreciate it. A lot of good bits and pieces of of info today. Um, so while we're waiting for some, some questions to trickle in, I think one um, that I think could be relevant for the audience today, as I was skimming through our attendee list before we got started, it seems like there's a, a good chunk of some marketing folks on the call today, too. Um, so I'd love to hear both of your perspectives on, you know, just how you guys collaborate with your marketing teams, um, you know, at, at the top of the funnel and the bottom of the funnel, and if you guys have any, some, some great advice or um best practices that uh, you guys employ on your end um, to make that relationship successful. Yeah, so from the bottom of the funnel perspective, that's a, it's a great question, Bethany. Um, at Panadoc, you know, we, we hear a lot from our customers saying, you know, when a marketer comes inbound, you know, our sales reps aren't leveraging our content properly or um, our, our sales reps are actually going rogue and, rogue and even – editing content that we created. Um, and that can be a huge pain for a marketing leader. You guys spend a ton of time on brand and a ton of time on your content. Um, and, and the most important aspect of that is that it's being leveraged effectively. Um, and the overall goal is to enable the sales team to use your content to close more deals and tell that cohesive story. Um, so with, with PandaDoc, we try to, we try to encourage our, our uh, users to, to enable their sales folks with content, but also control that. Um, so you can you can lock content, you can you can um, you can keep content in certain places so that folks can't edit it, um, and you can actually track new content. So if we're going to roll out maybe a new case study or something from one of your new Primo customers, and you want to see what kind of traction that might be gaining um, at the bottom of the funnel, you can actually track usage rates from the sales rep on if they're leveraging that content. Um, but also view rates. If it's a video, you can see if people are actually viewing it. Um, if it's a static piece of content, you can see how long folks are actually um, spending time viewing that. So it's a great tool for marketers and sales to leverage um, in, in the content space to try to drive brand uh, awareness and consistency um, while, while allowing the sales reps to leverage that in a way that actually drives revenue. Uh, I'm sure Adrian has some, some thoughts on, on marketers as well. Yeah, I could probably talk for another hour about uh, the relationship between marketing departments and sales departments. But uh, I think universally, like no matter what size of company you work at, um, there's no doubt that there's always a little bit of um, tension between, you know, marketing and sales. Because, you know, especially in today's world of can spam, GDPR, 
and Castle's Law that we have here in Canada, um, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of lists of do's and, and can't do's that you have to abide by in your communications today with your clients. And so it is very important that marketing has a hand in what salespeople are using to communicate with their clients. You obviously don't want salespeople to be rogue marketers and, you know, cutting and pasting uh, pictures off of the Internet that into, you know, PowerPoint slides that they're not supposed to be using. But um, we've built a couple of features right within our tool that really speaks to, I think, um, incorporating the need for marketing and sales to collaborate and have um, joint approval of content that goes out, just like PandaDoc does. So um, if you think about all the possible types of situations that you, know, you would want to follow up with a client, our marketing department's already created um, more than a dozen templates so that if you're launching a new product or service or you're trying to get people to a webinar or um, you're, meeting, you're, you're trying to set up a meeting for the first time, our marketing department has already pre-written a whole bunch of templates for you to use. And our sales team um, and, and a lot of the input from salespeople that we work with goes into a, a separate section, which is sales templates. So we've got pre-written templates for you to close the panda doc, you know, help close the panda docs via email that you've got out there in, you know, in the world. And also for you to send, uh, we've got templates that you, know, you can use to do all of your follow, all your follow-up emails. So um, we can actually, we actually give marketing departments the ability to lock or um, you know, limit salespeople from using certain types of templates or uh, you know, use uh, completely designed you know, in-house templates that, um, that they both, both agree on using. Thanks, guys. Um, I know as a marketer myself and, and working with our internal PandaDoc team, it's, it's crucial that we stay on brand and stay on message, uh, you know, especially with the work we do to, to getting to know our buyer personas and pitching our audience. So, um, you know, I appreciate both of your responses in that regard. I think, I think you know, we do a great job internally, and there's always room for improvement, and luckily we have technology and tools to, to help us in, uh, along that way. Um, <clears throat> another great question came in. Um, what pieces of software would you recommend for keeping track of projects and communication within a team, within your sales team, especially ones that gather and analyze data over time? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I think the hardest part is gathering and analyzing data over time. Um, that's going to be a tough one uh, from my experience. But in terms of keeping track of projects and communication, um, I've used Trello and I've used Asana, um, both of which very effectively. Um, Trello is the, definitely the cheaper version of that, so if you're worried about cost, I would go there. Um, Asana has some other like bells and whistles for for project timelines and, and um, maintaining you know uh, progress within those projects. But um, yeah, Adrian, I don't know if you have any other experience with tools other than than those two, but I've seen pretty good success from our our operations team using those. Yeah, we actually use Trello as well. Um, Slack is great also uh, because you can have multiple departments within different conversations uh, all internally. So um, that can really help drive, you know, let's say you're developing a new uh, campaign or a piece of software. Um, you know, we specifically use tr um, Slack in order to communicate effectively, uh, you know, uh, with with each other, and we we've, we've got global operations. We have an uh, an office in Miami, one in Serbia, and um, one in Toronto. So we need that ability. Um, I would say if you need to share documents, and I, I I don't know if I should bring this up, but I've used Evernote in the past. I don't know if PandaDoc has that ability to share internal documents, but Evernote's great for um, or Google Docs, obviously, to 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 jointly maintain documents that need to be um, you know updated uh, real-time for projects that are ongoing. Um, the last thing that I would mention from a, a, a standpoint of sales automation, I'll bring it back, is um, gathering data and analyzing it over time is really important. So um, we do have team set, up, team set up within AutoClose so that your entire sales team, um, whether you're you know, separated, let's say you've got 10 outside wholesalers and 10 inside wholesalers, you may be uh, separated by geography or by vertical, but um, you can, you know, the, whoever is the sales leader 
Um, you can always you can share templates with each other, but you can also um, oversee all of the results. And it is really important to consistently measure, you know, what's happened in the past in order to share best practices. You know, why did Billy get such a good open rate here? Why did Joanne get a great click rate? And and why did uh, Bobby get the most replies in his campaign? Um, really drill down and, and, and see, you know, what the content was that they used in order to achieve those results. Um, so you can do that right within our tool as well. Awesome. Yep, Thanks, the guys. And, uh, yeah, a, a shout-out to our one of our listeners. They, they timed in with their favorite tools, um, Basecamp, Slope, and Monday.com were, were their suggestions. So thanks to whoever um, gave us that nice little recommendation. Certainly appreciate it. Um, so we only have a few minutes left. I wanted to spend this, this last couple minutes just putting out a couple of free resources we've made available to our, our listeners today. So um, Pandadoc, we are um, – feel free to take a look at our elements of a winning sales proposal. Um, it goes into a little more in-depth about what Mike was speaking of earlier about, you know, just key ingredients that you would want to include um, in your proposal to make sure you can close deals faster. Um, Pandadoc does also, also offer a 14-day free trial, so there is a link there as well to sign up. Um, Adrian, did you want to take a minute or two and just talk about some resources that you're offering from Autoclose? Yeah, absolutely. So we are offering a free ebook as well. Um, it's a great read. It's a very easy read. Um, we call it 673 Years of Sales Excellence because jointly um, we gathered a, uh, you know, a, a collection of 32 of the biggest um, tech startup entrepreneurs or social media influencers, um, people that have been excelling at sales uh, their entire lives and, um, their you know joint years of experience were six hundred came to six hundred and seventy three years. So um, you know you're going to hear thirty two different uh, opinions on you know some of the most important things that um, uh, that 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 drive uh, sales and allow people to excel at what they do um, in the sales space. So uh, that's available for all of you for free. And also, um, if you follow the link under attachments and links, uh, you could get a free 14-day trial with us as well. Um, so we're happy to we're happy to uh, either onboard you, or um, if you want to book a meeting with me directly, um, you can do so right on our website as well, or anyone from our sales team. Awesome, Mike, Adrian, thanks guys so much for your content today. Super appreciate it. It was a great, thoughtful discussion. And uh, thanks to all of our listeners. And um, we hope you guys have a great day. Thanks, Bethany. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Have a great one. Yeah. Thanks again. Have a good rest of the week. Bye-bye, everybody. See you guys.